<laughs> Hi everyone, Alex at Coram Deo Farm. We are a year two Oklahoma flower farm that sell market bouquets from our roadside stand. It is the middle of August. It is awful out and we have to do some not so fun August tasks. And we wanted to bring you along. So we have decided that we are gonna take the month of August off from selling. There's a couple reasons we decided on that. One, we wanted a break because August burnout is a very, very real thing. And we wanna keep the joy of what we're doing. We wanna keep that energy up and high. We homeschool our four children. And so we wanted to get our homeschool year started. And also a third reason is we noticed that people tend, in our area at least, tend to buy a lot less flowers in August. And so we thought, why are we working the, in the most tired fashion, in the absolute worst conditions for the least amount of sales? Are we losing some money in August sale money? Yeah. Are we losing tons and tons because we're not open? No. And so I'm glad we made that decision. But taking August off doesn't actually mean we are taking farming off. We're just not having the stand open. So I'm not harvesting and arranging bouquets. We have so much field work to do today on Saturday and wanted to show you what we need to do. If you go back in our video library, we did an early summer field tour so you can see what things looked like when they were pretty and in bloom and not cycled off like they are now. But this field in front of me from about here over, these were all planted March through May and were all of our spring and early summer flowers. They have since either gone to seed or the flowers are just not of cuttable quality for bouquets. That's this field section. This field section over here was our succession planting that gave me more flowers in June and July. And what we need to work on today, which is gonna be awful because it's gonna be like 100 degrees today, is we need to chop down this whole field, ah, chop it all down. We need to pull up landscape fabric and drip irrigation and we need to start silage tarping to kill the grass because before we know it here in fall, I'm gonna need to be planting for next year. Here's a different angle, but next year we are combining our rows. Previously we had 30 feet and then we planted another 30 feet, but next year they're all gonna be 60 foot runs. And so if I'm looking at it this way, our, our ordering instead of having two fields will just be like row one, two, three. It'll make it so much easier. But row one will be tulips and then rows two and three will be planted out in October with spring flowers. And then in March, I'll plant the next three rows and then after our frost, the final three and a half rows will get planted. But because we live in Oklahoma with Oklahoma pasture grass, we have to get this cleared out and silage tarping or else I'm gonna have a grass disaster so chopping down the fields, getting irrigation and fabric pulled up, and then the silage tarping down on the rows that are gonna be planted first is a big task today, which is important. And then also the southeast field that I mentioned was my third succession. It is still blooming right now, but I'm not cutting on it to sell because we're closed, but it is starting to go to seed and getting a bit tired because it's not being cut on. When you cut on the plants, you're actually keeping them healthy and keeping them producing more. So because I haven't been doing that, the plants look worse than they otherwise would. And I would really like to be able to cut on some of these zinnias and the basil and the marigolds that I have in here. I'd love to be able to cut on at least some of those plants in September and maybe into early October. So because of that, we're gonna go through here and it's gonna be painful because there are a lot of beautiful flowers growing right now. But we're gonna come in here and we're gonna give it like a haircut by about a third. We looking at the calendar, we're gonna open our stand up again in two weeks. So if I cut these back by a third, with our heat and sunshine still, the days are still long and warm here, in two weeks, I think at least enough flowers will have reflushed beautifully, not gone to seed and not deformed and stressed, and I can start using them in September for our bouquets. So these rows are gonna fully come out. They need to be connected to the front to get silage tarp. So like these guys are done, unfortunately. You've had a good run, adios. But I'm still left with five more rows and 
as you can see, I'll get a little closer. A lot of them look really pretty. Not at their best, but the plants are still alive and green. They're still producing. And so I need to cut them down. Eric's gonna come in with a trimmer and we're gonna cut and then I'm gonna be on cleanup duty. And then hopefully also by doing this, I can regain my walkways, which is necessary. It's pretty miserable bushwhacking my way through and getting all the bug bites and stuff to get into harvest. This is honestly one of the hardest parts about flower farming is August. It is, so where I said we're in Oklahoma. Last week we had highs in the hundreds, but we had the heat index because we also get really humid. The heat index I think I saw was like 119, 120. It's those kind of days where it's almost like our winter. We are inside all day. It's really hard and challenging to get things done. I mean, if you start at 7 a.m., by like 9 p.m. you're dripping soaked. It's really hard. Our bug pressure here in Oklahoma is high. In August, it's like everything is at its biggest monstrous size. I mean, our grasshoppers, I'm not exaggerating, are three inches and are giant right now because they're mating and so they're kind of like drunk and they're flying to your face. And I have more white flies that could kill like seven farms <laughs> that we're dealing with. And so August is just really hard. But August is when you still have to be getting ready for fall if you want to have a good fall season. Because like I said with these plants, if I don't come in here and give them what is effectively a really quick deadhead, September I'm not going to have the beautiful blooms that I want to have, that I think my customers will want when the temperature starts getting lovely again. When everyone's in their like pumpkin spice latte mood, and vibe with the scarfs and they want their bright bold bouquets next to their pumpkin arrangement and be like sorry i didn't do anything in august because it was hot so i actually don't have flowers they're all dead and gone to seed don't want that to happen and that's a hard discipline focus get it done work hard element of flower farming that in august when you're tired you've been pushing since march it can be really easy to let that happen and so even though it's going to be a miserable day we're going to try to push through and really get this done i know november alex will be really happy when i'm planting out those rows that have now will have sat silage tarped for two and a half months or so november alex is going to be really happy we did that because it's just going to be such a beautiful blank slate of weed free soil loud truck weed free soil to plant my plugs in and to be excited for 2024 and not leave everything all jammed in october to get done that do you hear i'm like pep talking myself <laughs> to get this done because this is gonna be so miserable but has to get done i think reclaiming my walkways will make this feel just way fresher and happier and more likely to give me the quality flowers that i want in September to go with all of our sunflowers that we planted. Because it's going to get so hot, I'm not even exaggerating, it's gonna get so hot that our cameras are probably gonna overheat just being out filming. <laughs> but we'll try to capture as much B-roll as we can of what it all looks like that we're doing. And then in the evening tonight, when it's like civilized for humanity again, we'll come back out and do like a little tour of what everything looks like after we get all of this done and give you more details about like what some of the stuff we might be planting and our timelines and a little more detail when we can handle being out here and electronics are also literally not melting. But I'm gonna go inside, I'm gonna pour my coffee, I'm gonna get the whole crew up, the kids are gonna help, get everyone suited and booted to get out here as a team effort to get this done. And maybe I could even fit in a Saturday afternoon nap if we work hard. So here we go.
about to cut down the Lysianthus row and we sold them all so quickly from the stand that I never actually got to enjoy Lysianthus inside myself. So I cut the second cup to put in a decadent arrangement for myself, which I'm really excited about. But bye bye Lizzie, see you next year. So in this sunflower field, we are trialing direct sewing our sunflowers, not in landscape fabric. Direct sewing in landscape fabric was not going well for us, so I was starting all of our sunflowers from transplants, but I need way more sunflowers than I can start from seed. So we direct sewed and things are going really well. The ones that are next to me that are the tallest were clearly the ones that were first planted. And then by height, you can tell when we planted them. So these two rows next to me, were direct sewed with the jang cedar that we borrowed from our neighbor and they look amazing there's a little bit of a height difference even though they're the same height because of the shade that's cast from our giant oak tree when the sun is setting so the side that's getting less sun is actually shorter which is interesting it might be like its own built-in field succession plan if these guys take a little bit longer than the ones that get more sun but I couldn't be happier. I think the size looks great. The spacing looks great. I love that I didn't have to start them from seed. So we got a lot done, not everything. We got too tired. We quit around 1 p.m. It got too hot. We were too exhausted after working for about four or five hours in our 100 degree humid Oklahoma sun. But we got, I think, like our biggest priorities done. The biggest priorities were ripping out our old tomatoes that were infested with white flies because they were causing me problems and I'm done. I've processed a million tomatoes. We're done with tomatoes. So those left, we cut down the first three rows in the, the field. The tomatoes were done with us. Yeah, the tomatoes were like, we're not producing anymore. So we cut down the first three rows because that's gonna have our tulips and some of our spring field flowers. So those need to get ripped out and we didn't get to the silage part task but hopefully in a couple days we can get the landscape fabric up and the silage tarp done and then that will be checked off. And then the most important thing was we quickly hedge trimmed all of our zinnias. It was the equivalent of like a fast deadhead so that they can reflush over the next two weeks. So we have beautiful September flowers and not flowers that are really stressed and have gone to seed and stuff because we weren't cutting on them and harvesting them in August with being closed. So I think it was a really productive Saturday considering how awful the summer conditions were. Yep, we gotta get these rows prepped for fall. We got some fall 
some spring flowers to plant. We have a lot to do this fall. <laughs> we have a long early. list. I'm really happy with everything we got done considering the conditions. The biggest task that got done was the deadhead haircut. I'm going to be really interested to see how it works. To see is two weeks enough time for a lot of these to reflush? Did it not work at all? And that's not something I'm going to do next year. So always experimenting, especially because I didn't have a fresh succession that I would normally want to have for September since we took August off. It'll be an interesting experiment and we'll tell you if it works. We'll do an update here in a couple weeks to see the difference. It's always interesting to see like, okay, there's no blooms. What does it look like in two weeks? I'm excited to see. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So even though it's like as hot as fire in August, we're already thinking about spring of next year. And so some of our next videos are gonna be everything that we're planning for spring, a lot of what we're planning to grow, talk a little bit about when we plan to plant it, where we're gonna put it on the property and stuff. So it's gonna be a lot of like future planning videos, which I'm excited about because it's so hot. I'm excited to think about like cool, calm, beautiful spring filled with tulips, but we'll see. Thanks for watching.